I'm Jill Tenamani. I am a research scientist at the Crane Center for Early Childhood Research and Policy. I've been involved with trainings for the wonderful Reading Buddies program. And today I'm just going to give you some tips for reading with children. Um, often when people are asking me how to read with children, a big concern is what to do when ch a child comes to a word they're having difficulty with. So I've come up with five fix-up strategies that I've adapted from a tutoring program called Book Buddies. Um, and these five strategies are wait, prompt, draw attention to letters, draw attention to context, and give the word. So I'll talk through each of these right now. So the first is to wait. Give that child time to think. What we really want out of a child is for them to self-correct. That's our goal. So if we give them time to wait and think about that word, they can self-correct and they can show you the strategies that they already know about reading and how to fix up something when they're having difficulty. So often that's just pointing to the word, giving them time to think, and saying, what is that word? Just a quick sort of idea to give them time to think. And then if that's not happening, just waiting, then you can move on to the second strategy, which is to prompt. And that's when you can say something like, does that word make sense here? What do you think that word might be? Can you go back again or try again? Just a very quick moment in time to say, you know, I think you can do this yourself and you can self-correct. A note here is that what we'd like is to keep the flow of reading going because that keeps a child's self-confidence up about reading, their comprehension of the story can continue. So if we can keep these interruptions at a minimum, that's great. That's why this first strategy is just to wait a little bit and the second is to prompt. And make sure what you're trying to correct is something that has meaning to the story. So if it um, compromises any meaning, we're gonna wanna stop and have them self-correct. If not, we can move on. So you've waited, you've prompted, and sometimes that still doesn't work. What you might want to do then is draw children's attention to how they might help, a strategy they might use to fix up that word. So that third strategy is to draw attention to those letters. What we want is children to be looking at letters and sounding words out, because that's always the most accurate. Often what children will do is look, will look at a picture and guess, and that's often an inaccurate guess. So what we want to do is give them that really correct strategy first which is to look at letters. So we can say things like, can you say that first letter? What sound does this make? Or we can say, are there letters that you know in this? Are there parts of this word that you know? Really drawing attention to that accurate information they can get off the page. If that third dress strategy doesn't work, drawing attention to letters, we'll move on to using context. And that's getting the child to think about what they've just read. Often saying something like, read the whole sentence. What would make sense here? And that will help them think about what they're comprehending, what they're reading, and get sort of the whole idea of the story. And finally, give the word. If all of those strategies haven't worked, you might want to take a step back and say, all right, it's time for us to move on with the story. It's time to give the child a word. And a nice way to do that is to give two choices. Could this be the word cat or hat? Another nice word way to do this is to say, this is a really tough word. You might need time um, for me just to give you this word because this is a challenging word. So I'll just tell you what that is. And then you can move on. Um, another nice tip when you've done all of these is take a step back after you've read and say to the child, wow, you did a great job using these strategies. I really liked when you looked back at letters or whatever strategy they used to give them that self-confidence that using a fix-up strategy is a great thing to do. Um, what you'll be watching next is a video of me reading with a child and you can note some places that I've done this. Okay, you ready to read? I'll, okay, I'll turn us to the first page. How about that? Okay. Here's the title page. Oh, it's got two title pages. I love that. Look at that. Four. I think you're right. Four title pages. Okay, go ahead. Some of them came across the ocean on a ship. They were going to work on in the circus. One elephant named a was a river. And one makes even said Oliver. Can we go back and look at that word? Does that make sense? Okay, try that for a Got it. Good job. I like how you looked and you said, does that make sense in the sentence? And you picked the right word. Good job. Glad we looked because um, ten right back. <gasps> that was another fix-up strategy you remembered from the story. I love it. Those were good strategies to know, know the right word there. Okay, we can keep going. There must be a mistake one older only ten elephants said 
Oh. You got it. You got that one. I. Ordered. You got it. Let's say the word again. I ordered mm -hmm. a new turn out for shirt. The shirt just means you don't need a, you need is a moving van, said the tax man. We do not stop. He did not stop. What letter do you see there? He did not stop. That's right. You used your letters to figure that one out. Good job. I would. He should call the zoo right now. I know. A taxi is kind of a silly thing to call. All of followed the cars. The drivers held, held out their hands. You should call the zoo too. Mm-hmm. You should. When Oliver made a turn, he held out his truck. Trunk. Good job fixing it up. You saw that N there, so you knew that was a trunk. That and makes sense. And should call the zoo. And they all should be calling the zoo. Mm. I know. I think you got a good idea. He saw a woman w waiting herself by waiting. Yeah, if an elephant on the <laughs> scale could have broken it. I know. Oliver got on the scale. I'm heavier as an elf. Heavier. As an elephant, too, he said. I like Elf the way you looked back at that. Elephants can't talk. <laughs> That's a good point. At last, Oliver reached the zoo. Who is in charge here, he asked. I am, said a man. You, do you need a elephant, asked Oliver. I'm sorry, not right now, said the zoo man. Thanks, Oh. Anyway, Oliver said and said and would walked. like to have me for a pet? He asked. I have a part. Let's look at the letters. That that I said. have a parrot. Said the that person. was a great try because you saw the P and saw P and knew that that was a bird. This is a really hard word. It's actually parakeet. Have you heard of a parakeet bird? That's that um, kind of bird, and they make noises a lot. So you can try that sentence again. That one's a parakeet. I, Let's see. Okay, so they, they, the children are saying goodbye. <gasps> and look, they're taking him back. You were right. High five. Good reading. Many times throughout the video, all I had to do was wait, point to the word, prompt, say things like, does this make sense? So I'm using those first two strategies, wait and prompt. One time I had to draw attention to letters. I said, do you know what sound that letter makes? That's all I needed to say and point to it. Went quickly and he moved on quickly. Um, I draw, drew attention to context. I said, does that make sense there? What just happened in this story? And then finally for one word, I had to just say, this is a tough word. It was the word parakeet. I said, do you know what a parakeet is? We talked about that briefly and I said, this is that word. And then we moved on. So using these five fix up strategies I think is really helpful because they give you confidence that you're saying some of the right things to get a child moving and really enjoying the reading experience. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, stages of reading and skills children might have when they're in a certain stage of reading and books that would match their levels um, and what you can do with these books. Uh, so there are four stages. There's the emergent reader, the beginning reader, the intermediate reader, and the advanced reader. So first I'll talk about some skill sets you might see in a child that's an emergent reader and the age group that you might see in them. I think it's important to remember too that I'm going to give you a general range of age group. Sometimes children that are far younger or a bit older also have these set of skills and that's okay. It's important to understand their skills and where the child is and match that book to their level and not worry as much about their age group because what we're really wanting is to match that perfect level of book to the child so they feel comfortable with that book and they feel happy about themselves as a reader and they're enjoying that book, a book that's challenging for them, um, still helps them learning, but then is not too hard. Okay, so the first type of reader I'll talk about is that emergent reader. And typically these children are from anywhere from preschool to about mid grade one. And what you'll see with these children is that they're beginning to learn about print, that it moves from left to right, top to bottom. They're beginning to understand, understand names of letters and sounds letters may, may make. Um, and they're knowing that print has meaning. They're knowing that pictures are different than print. And for these children, great books to use from them are picture books, information books, 
so that they're understanding, um, that books can tell information to. Also, really great books are alphabet books since they're working on knowing the names of their letters and their sounds. Um, so these are all really good types of books to be reading with this type of child. And what's important to note here too is that these children are emergent readers. They're not yet reading. So it's important to do, to think about some read aloud tips that you might want to think about when reading with these child, children. And this, this book itself, the storybook, is great for showing these kinds of tips because you're going to want to point out print. And this is a book that we call a print salient book because your eyes immediately go from picture to print since they're written in such nice, big, colorful letters. And you can do things like track print and show them that print goes from left to right by saying, shout, shout it out is the title of this book. Showing them how the book opens and where you might start to read on a page really helps them understand these concepts about print that are gonna be important as an emergent reader goes. And talking to them about the letters they might see on the page too. So this is a big letter A. Does anybody else, do you have a letter A in your name? Asking questions like this is great. So when reading with an emergent reader, you're gonna to wanna to point out print. You're gonna to wanna to talk about story structure, beginning, middle, and end. You're going to want, when reading an information book, to point out labels on words. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to talk about letters and their sounds because these are all really important concepts that the emergent reader needs before they become that beginning reader. So then I'll move on to a beginning reader. And typically you'll see these children in the age group of kindergarten to about early grade three. And these children are using pictures to decode words. They're just beginning to sound simple words out. Um, they're beginning sending out the beginning of simple words and they're starting to understand endings like ed and ing and s and es. They're starting to correct their mistakes also. And what they're great at, and they're really getting a large vocabulary of is sight words, so words that they know automatically, like a or an or the. So when thinking about books for these types of children, we're gonna want simple books that have about one sentence per page. Um, and this has a one or two sentences per page. Um, and what we might see, too, is that they're simple words that have sight words like go in them. Um, some even earlier books might have pattern sentences like I like the hat, I like the cat, giving children that confidence in that simple pattern first that changes up just one word. So these types of books give children a chance to practice sight words and decoding some words while giving them confidence in being able to read an entire book. Okay? Um, and there's levels, usually they're either a pre-reader or a level one for these types of books that you can pick out for these easy readers. Okay, so then moving on to the intermediate reader. You'll typically see these children from grade one to about mid-grade four. These children are starting to read smoothly with fewer mistakes. They're starting to read fluently with expression. Um, they're continuing to use some of the pictures to understand the story as well, though. So for these children, you're gonna wanna move to a little bit more complex book with about two to three sentences per page. These are, have more of a storyline they may have varied vocabulary instead of that same vocabulary that you'll see over and over. Um, so just a little bit more challenging for these kids. And usually these are around the levels in two and three when you're seeing leveled readers. Okay, then finally we'll move to the advanced reader. And these children are really reading very fluently. They're reading with very few mistakes. Um, they're asking about vocabulary. They're beginning to get vocabulary out of books because they're able to decode all those words. They're really learning from them. So for these children, you can move to chapter books. They can have few or no pictures in them. They actually have chapters, quite a story, and we're picking books that we know we want them to learn from that we may want them to gain vocabulary from as well. I'm Kathy Shabadagi, Public Services Director, Youth and Teen Services. Thank you for attending our Reading Buddies training today. Look forward to you implementing these techniques as you participate in our Reading Buddies program. And I want to thank Jill Pentamonte for sharing her training expertise with us. Thank you, Jill.